I saw a walking bear. I'm bouncing around on projects. Right now, I have one day to complete a walking bear. So right now, I'm gonna do a $500 walking bear. So I will guide you through the process here and we'll get it done today. Awesome, let's do it. A little video montage and do a little voiceover here and there. Step one, I cut a small angle on the base of the log to give it a lean. I am overly cautious when I do this because if you go too far, it's going to just fall right over. Once you get that kind of at a nice angle, you can kind of move into step two. For me, I like to cut, a, cut away the sapwood and cut it at kind of a slight triangle because the bear is always tapered in. And then step three, I know the back of the head and the butt and the body is all going to be on that angle. So I just remove all the weight and then I move into step five which is draw the profile of the bear. And step six, I begin the block out. Once I'm done that, I begin step seven, which is cutting out the nose and the cheeks. So I really like to do a straight down cut for the muzzle, and then I can kind of shape back the cheeks and know exactly how long my muzzle is going to be. Then step eight, I cut out the chin and make sure I leave enough room for the mouth and the nose. When shaping out the head, I like to think about the distance between the nose, the forehead, and the ears. I try to keep them all balanced, and once the head is to the proper size you want the bear to be, then you can proportionately think about connecting the rest of the body and moving on on to the next step. Step nine, I am going to shape out the body. The right hand is going to be on the stump, which allows me to create negative space underneath it because I'm going to push through so there's a hole. That's much more challenging. If you're just starting out, you don't have to do that. But for me, I find it enjoyable to be constantly putting pressure on myself to get better and improve. The left paw hangs natural like a natural bear, so you can factor that into when you're going to push underneath for the negative space. But that is the tricky spot. And if you're going to commit to that way, just Take your time, don't rush into it, and be smart about where you're cutting because you don't want to lose the belly or the feet when you get to that point. But once I'm comfortable, I go to step 10, the bear bum, and I like big bums and I cannot lie. So as you can see, I'm pushing it in. Now that I've tapered that angle down to where the bear is standing, I make sure that I am able to push in and separate both legs and have another point of negative space which adds a little more technical difficulty, but it also showcases technique and makes the animal more realistic and believable for the clients that you're selling them to. So in step 11, I like to round out the animal before furring and do the final shaping like in the legs and the feet and really kind of capture that feel of a non-square bear. When I move into step 11, furring. I'm using the Echo CS 2511 with an 8 inch Canon dime tip bar. And with this fur, I'm kind of just pulling down on either side. I shape a lot of everything with my tip of my bar and I just try to be consistent. I find consistency of finish to me is such an important part of this process. Once I have all the furring done, step 13, I grab my Makita finger sander and I really start to shape in the snout and kind of capture the mouth. I went for a more natural looking mouth, so I kind of wanted to just draw it down and then do the furring on the top of the head and, sh and push back the eyes before I actually push in the eyes. Once I push in the eyes, I'm able to grab my Makita die grinder, which is great for eyeballs. And I have an eyeball bit. If you don't have an eyeball bit, get a Dremel and carve a round circle and just try to make them both evenly as possible. Once you have that, I grab my die grinder, I switch to a metal carbide cone bit. You can get them at most hardware stores or Precision Auto or Lord Co. in Canada. Then I really emphasize all those features. It burns and carves at the same time, very similar to the Dremel, but it's, it's at a bigger scale. Step 16. I grab the Iowata airbrush and I start with the black. I do the nose, eyes, ears, mouth, claws, and the base. And then I start to do accent lines everywhere because that really emphasizes the pattern change of the fur and allows the burning to blend and contrast nicely. And then really I move into step 17 when I'm happy with it. I use a Sandoflex with 100 grit and a high speed 
drill from Makita and I flap it clean. Step 18, I grab a Makita angle grinder with a 4 inch disc and 36 grit. I just buff the base lightly. Then I go to step 19 where I am done and I use Sherwin Williams log home finish stain and uh, that's it. So, got her finished. Put a nice coat on it for a very nice lady who has just beaten cancer. This is a gift to herself, so this bear is got a lot of meaning to it. I am uh, really happy with how it turned out. This is my first bear like this. I've never really done this style of bear before, so it really looks cool. So I hope you guys learned some stuff. Make sure to give this a like and uh, subscribe to my page. Feel free to share it too. Peace out.